This message is brought to you by Love and Grace Fellowship. We believe that as you listen to this tape, the Holy Spirit will guide you into the truth of God's Word and will help you to become the victorious person God wants you to be. And now, Dr. Bill Bazanski. How to renew your spiritual strength. And I just want to say this to you. Man is a triune being made in the image and likeness of God. And that part, the likeness of God, is the spirit part within you. And the soulish part within you, the ability to make a decision, the ability to say, I am, whatever you are. Only, you are the only creature. You are the only creature besides God that can do that. Have you ever heard of a poodle dog say, I am a poodle? Have you ever heard a hippopotamus say, I'm a hippo? Yes or no? Have you ever heard a giraffe say, I'm a giraffe? Giraffe, dog, cat cannot say what you can say because God did not make a hippo in his image. And he says, tell him I am that I am sent me. And the only other creature upon this earth has the capability to say I am is you. You're the only one. Because we are made in the image and likeness of God. Therefore, the devil is going to do everything he can to destroy and to stop you from being creative and being powerful in this earth. And the spirit would want to drain your spirit going into your mind. This is why I am saying to you that if you want to be strong in God and know what the word says, get your mind renewed and know who you are in Christ. And when you know that, then friend, I'll tell you something, the devil will also know who you are. Paul I know, and Peter I know, but who are you? Hello. Turn to Psalms 28. Psalms 28, Deuteronomy chapter 30, Proverbs chapter 18. In Psalms 28, starting with verse 7, the Bible says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is my strength, and he is my saving strength of his anointed. When a Christian realizes who the source of his strength is, and the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all of your heart. When a, when a Christian understands who he is in Christ, and he knows that he is powerful in Christ, and he knows that Christ in him is powerful, he realizes that his strength comes from God, and God is his source of strength, and you know this, that as soon as you become the champion, as soon as you become a child of God, as soon as you become God's beloved, don't you know you have taken a title as being God in this earth? The devil is no longer the God of this earth. He was, but Jesus took the power away, and he gave you and me the power. Glory to God. Jesus says in Matthew 28, 18, all of the power in heaven and in earth is being given unto me. So if Jesus received all of the power in heaven and in earth, and he gave it to you, Luke 10, 19, behold, I give you power of all of the power of the enemy, then you have power over the devil. Say amen. amen. I didn't hear you. Amen. So if we have the power, then we better use it. Amen. Now, in order for you to use it, you have to know how. Now, if I were to have a switch right now, and I were to turn the switch off, these lights would go out. The power would not flow into those lights, right? The power can be right up to your mouth, right up to your tongue, but if you don't know how to turn the switch on, the power is there, but you'll never enjoy the blessing of the light. But when you know how to turn the power on, you can enjoy it. A little louder, please. And don't close your eyes. I know you just got through eating, but don't close your eyes. This is not a night-night room. This is a resurrection city. Amen. So if the folks next to you having a little difficulty, friendly. Hello. Amen. Still love me? All right. So he says the strength comes from God. Now watch. 
turn to Deuteronomy chapter 30. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, let's start with verse 15. God is speaking to his people and he said, See, I have set before thee this day life and good. Stop right there. Life and good. That means the very substance of life, the life itself, and everything that is good, God set before you, right? So God sets good things before you, life and good and death and evil. God says they are both real. Death is real. Life is real. Good is real. Evil is real. And he says they are right there. And you have a choice to make. God says they're there. But God says you have to make the choice. Now in verse 19 he says, See, if you were in a spirit, you would already know where I am, huh? But you are in a spirit because I just told you. Verse 19, And I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. He says, Therefore choose life that both you and your seed may live. As far as God is concerned, they're both real. But God is saying, I, your God, want you to choose life and want you to choose my blessing. Now, they're there. The choice is yours. God doesn't force anyone. He says, I want you to choose life, and I want you to choose the blessing, but if you want to choose death and curse, you have the choice. No one can force you. Watch what else he says. That thou mayest have, he says, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is what? He is thy life. The Lord is thy life. Say with me. The Lord is my life. Say it again. The Lord is my life. Say it again. The Lord is my life. Who is your life? Who gives life? Who gives good? Therefore, anything that takes away life and anything that is not good is not of God. I said it's not of God. Therefore, you don't have to settle for second best when you can have the best. And Jesus is the best. A little louder, please. I like to hear folks talk. Now, he is saying to you and to me that God would have us to choose life and God would have us to choose good things in life. And God wants us to have power over all of these spiritual things, demonic forces. Now, turn with me, if you would, please, to Proverbs chapter 18 for just a moment. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, he says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life, they both exist, are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, death has fruit and life has fruit. He tells in Galatians 5.21 that the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. Now, because of the fruit of the Spirit of God, it has a fruit. It has, it has, the fruit will, will, will come into being when the Spirit of God is there. Now, when the Spirit of the enemy is there, you will have bickering, suffering, anger, frustration, destruction. There is the fruit of the other spirit, and that spirit is destruction. In other words, God has healthy fruit. The devil has rotten fruit. Now, whichever fruit you want to eat, it's your choice. You either eat healthy fruit or wormy fruit. And the devil is nothing but the worm. He is nothing but a creep. And God says, I have given you power over creeps. 
He says, everything that crawls or creeps upon this earth, I've given you power. Therefore, you have a right to walk upon the creep. And the devil is the creep. And you don't have to go to bed with a creep. So anything he has to offer, you don't have to receive. Now, for you and for me to strengthen our spirit, we must understand how to do it. Please turn with me to Luke chapter 17 and Matthew 24. And while you are turning to those two passages, I want to make several comments. That he says he wants you to choose life or death. There are two kinds of Christians. There are two kinds of people who say they are Christians. And I want to point them out to you because you will recognize them immediately. There are those, number one, that feed on life. There are those Christians that feed on life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There are those who feed on life and, and they feed on the Word of God because the Word is God, right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen? The Bible says, for the Word of God is the same as God. Whenever I pause, please respond. Sister, you've been neglecting your responsibility. All right, all right. I want to hear. Amen. Praise God. Now, So the Bible says there's number one Christians, number one Christian, it would be the one that feeds on life. Jesus Christ, the Word. And no matter what happens, they speak life. Now let me show you what I mean by that. For example, if you go out and you eat food, even in a natural, even in a natural, if you eat food in your stomach, if it's a good food, you do not have indigestion. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? But when you eat bad food, you have indigestion. Which time do you feel better, with indigestion or without? Without. Jeremiah 15 said this, and he says, I found the Word, and I did eat the Word. And the Word of God was sweetness and rejoicing unto my soul. When Jeremiah said, I ate the word, friend, he actually said he was stuffing his spirit with his word. Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Say amen. Amen. So he was eating the word of God, and he was full of God's word. And did you know when Jeremiah prayed, and he was sick physically, and that this is a prophet of God, a man of God, full of God's word, he began to pray, says, why is my disease will not leave my body? Have you ever been sick in the body? Two folks. (laughs) Have you ever been sick in the body? Do you like it? See? That proves right there that it's not of God because it's not good. God only gives you good things. He said, but how come I am in pain? That's a good question. I'm glad you asked it. Because that's exactly what Jeremiah asked. He says, why, God, why am I in pain? And God said to Jeremiah, now watch it. Now, Jeremiah is a prophet. Hello? Jeremiah is a prophet. And he says, why am I in pain? And God put it to him. He says, because you have walked away from me. You got too proud. And do you know pride is a, goes before destruction? Did you know pride can destroy a man? Even though you may be a child of God, did you know pride can destroy a perfect good man of God? And when he repented, he began to speak the word. And as he began to speak the word, God set him free. In verse 17, only three verses below, when he repented, God set him free. Heal his body. And for for months and years, he was walking around with sickness in his body. When he searched his heart, he found the answer. God gave him the answer. It was the Word. And he began to speak the Word. He began to speak the Word. And the Word drove the sickness out. Now, 
I am not saying to you that sickness is not real. My Lord, I've been sick in body. I know how bad it is. I've been sick in my body when I was a sinner 14 years, paralyzed from waist down, couldn't walk. Doctor said, there's no hope for you. You'll never walk again. Well, friend, I'm walking. I'll tell you, I'm walking. Glory to God. I'm walking. The devil's a liar. I'm walking because Jesus Christ said to me, don't tell me I don't know what the pain's all about. I know it's real. But you know something? When the Word of God came into my life and I began to look at the Word, it healed my body just like that when I came with grips of myself that there's only one true God and one true healer is Jesus Christ. So when Christ came into my heart, he healed my body, and for the first time in 14 years, I stood on my feet without pain in my body, and the doctor just blew him away. He said, we don't understand. Well, you cannot understand supernatural things with a natural mind. Now, I want to say this to you. Sickness is real. But which is more real, your sickness or God's word? I want to ask you again. You didn't hear me. Sickness is real. But which is more real, your sickness or God's Word? word. And why are we talking so much about the sickness? I'll tell you why. Don't answer. I'll tell you why. You're full of it. You're full of it. Come on. The Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. And whatever you're full of is going to come out of your mouth. Well, my headache is just killing me. Well, why don't you get rid of it? (laughs) Now, why is it now your headache? Where did you get it, sweetheart? Did God give it to you? Well, no. Did your mother-in-law give it to you? Where did you get And why all of a sudden is it yours? You think God's going to take away something from you that belongs to you? No way, Charlie. No way. And Jeremiah came with that question. He says, why am I being tormented by this sickness in my body? And God showed him, he says, if you get the word inside of you and you have more word than sickness, the word will drive the sickness out. And three verses later, he got healed. Glory to God. He got healed. Friend, it is a spiritual law. The Bible says where two of you on earth agree as touching anything. Friend, when the devil comes around, he doesn't come with a PA system and says, Come on, sweetheart, I'm coming to give you a headache. Get yourself ready because I'm going to zap you one time. Does he say it to you? No. He's like a thief. He sneaks up. And all of a sudden, you do have a splitting headache. And immediately, the pain goes to your head and says, you have a headache. And when the symptom is there, and the thought is there, it meets spiritual law that says, where two of you agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be so to you. The devil operates with a symptom and with a thought, and that's true. But friend, when the symptom comes and no devil, I'm the child of God, washed by his blood. I don't have to put up with this nonsense. Glory to God. I've been redeemed. Then praise the Lord. The Lord says, you shall have whatever you desire. Jeremiah was full of God's word. And because he was full of God's word, every time he opened his mouth, the only thing that came out of his mouth is the word. No symptom, no problem, but the Word. Did you get it? Let me get a little closer to where we live so you can understand. You are what you eat, and you smell what you eat. And you look what you eat. If you constantly eat refried beans, you're going to look like it. Hello? Hello? Are you getting the message? Now, <laughs> uh, I better get back on the platform. <laughs> now, let me, let me show you. How many of you, be honest, I mean, this is, we're, we're teaching, right? I want you to understand. I want you to understand. My purpose is not 
to put anyone under condemnation. God forbid. I want to, re- I want to deliver you from it. And I want to show you how simple it is if you only follow the teaching of the Word. Now listen, I'm going to show you something, what the Word says. The Bible says, from the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. From the abundance or from the fullness of your heart. Matthew 12, 37. From the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. In other words, whatever is in your heart is going to come out of your mouth, right? Now, listen to me. How many of you honestly have eaten good, juicy hamburgers full of onions? I mean a big slice of it. See, there's one. Love them. Be honest. Come on. This is... I'm not going to test your breath. You've eaten. Didn't you enjoy it? Sure. While you were eating, you enjoyed it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have eaten it. Right? After you've eaten hamburgers and onions, what do you smell like when you burp? You say, oh, gross. No, it's not gross. Your neighbors can smell you. You can taste it the next day, isn't that right? They were good while they were eating, or while you were eating them, but my, 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 next day, there's just not enough scope. <laughs> can you relate to that? All right, in other words, the point I'm trying to make is what you put in your stomach, it came out of your mouth. Are you with me? On the other hand, if you take God's Word and you stuff yourself with God's Word daily, friend, every time you open your mouth, nothing but the Holy Ghost and the Word of God will come out, and every devil and every demon, every sickness will flee from you. Your husband will be saved. Your kids will be saved. Your wife will be saved. Your family will be saved. Your business will prosper. Why? Because the Word of God, the same Word that created heavens and the earth, abides within you. It's in your mouth, and you can speak it. You can speak it. You are God's vessel. You are God's channel. You are God's ambassador. And God is looking for people who will get the bellies full of God's word and speak the word and see God do miracles through their lives. God is looking for people who will stand up and say, no devil, you'll not torment me or my family because in Jesus' name I'm claiming a deliverance. We're marching out of Egypt. Glory to God. We're marching out of Egypt. And when you realize that God is on your side, when you can renew your mind and know, glory to your friend, let me tell you something. You don't have to go to Bible college. Thank God for Bible college. But you don't have to go to Bible college to be a child of God. The Bible says, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you. And I have ordained you. You got all the papers you need, sweetheart. Whoo, glory. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to fly away. Hallelujah. If you see a big hole up there, I'm gone, sweetheart. Don't even pray for me. Let me go. Amen. Friend, what I'm trying to say to you, we have the answer to the world's problem. We have the answer to the darkness that's covering this earth. We have the light of the world, Jesus Christ in us. What are we going to do with him? I tell you what, we realize who we are in Christ and, and renew our spiritual strength, friend. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say it louder? Amen. Now, they're giving me cue signs. And I haven't even gotten to my notes yet. I'm having such a good time talking to you. But they want us to go. My, Tom, am I re- am my time is up 10 minutes. Okay, number one, I said to you that there are those Christians who feed on life. And number two, there are those Christians that feed on death. Listen to me. These are the ones that get in a church. They just, nothing can please them. They always find wrong things with everybody. 
they find wrong things with the preacher. They find wrong things with the flowers. They find wrong things with the carpet. They find wrong things with the pew. They find all these wrong things. They never feel good. They're always aching. They're always in the prayer lines. They're always belly aching. No wonder they're sick. They're belly aching all the time. These are Christians who always say, I love God, but, I love God, but, I love God, but, the goats shall never enter the kingdom of God. And these but goats don't belong in God's kingdom. And God says, I am going to separate the goats from the sheep. And friend, if you're in the church and you're a goat, then you better turn into a sheep. Because sheep always butt, but the goats say, yeah, Lord. You still love me? Have you found Matthew, cha I mean Luke chapter 17? Remember the two Christians. One Christian feeds on life, and the other one feeds on death. They never believe that they can do anything for God. The interest is too high. We can't build a bigger church. How are we going to make it? I mean, after all, we can't pay tithe. We can't help PTL because, after all, we don't have enough. Who is your source, baby? Who is your source? Where do you come from? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't say, well, yeah, the fire is too hot. Maybe I better change my mind. He said, no, Nebuchadnezzar, you do what you have to do, but I'm going to trust my God, for my God shall deliver me, glory to God. And the fire couldn't touch them. The water couldn't drown them, glory to God. And they marched through the deserts to a promised land because the true God led them. And my friend, I want to tell you something. The same God that turned water into wine is still doing super duper. And when he said he turned water into wine, he didn't say skim milk and molasses, did he? Love me tender. Love me true. In Luke chapter 17 and verse 37, it's very important that you grasp the meaning of this. He says... Wheresoever the body is, underline the body is. It's important that you get it. Wheresoever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Wheresoever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. The body is a living organism. It has the ability to move, it has the ability to breathe, it has the ability to do things. A body is a living organism. Can you say amen to that? But now, the same passage, similar passage, and I believe that this is written for a reason, that we were to understand the meaning of this, that there is another passage in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 28, paraphrased somewhat, but it's the same meaning. However, the point is different for your and mine understanding. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 28, the Bible says, For wheresoever the carcass is, underline the carcass, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Now, you know as well as I do, and those of you that live in the country, you know that as long as there are healthy animals out there, the buzzards are not out there. Are they out there? But they're not circling over the, the live animals. But as soon as the animal starts getting sick or sick or dead, once it's dead, it is a carcass. And when a carcass is there, by the mere fact it is a carcass, it was at one time a live body. It was a live animal, but it became sick and died. It became a carcass. Hello? And this carcass has a means by attracting buzzards. When a carcass gets sick or is getting sick or is dying or dead, that signals the buzzards, the eagles, to come down and do what? Devour it. Now... On the other hand, let's take Christians. If a Christian is a healthy Christian and, and he speaks the word of God, the devil is out there, but he is not over your head. 
But friend, any time you start speaking death uh, to you or to your people or to things around you, you immediately push the button and the devil is there. You push the button and the buzzards out there, the demons trying to destroy you. That's why it's important for you to know how these demons operate. And when you realize the importance for where the carcass is, there will the vultures be gathered together, or the eagles, friend, you'll understand the spiritual importance. Every time you speak a word contrary to the word of God, you immediately trigger the button, and the devil knows exactly where to come and attack. Are you liking the message so far? I'll continue at 9 o'clock in the morning. They just give me a signal. And I am obedient. Sometimes I go a little long. But I'm going to obey because I know that they have a television taping. And should you want to go there, we definitely wouldn't want you to go. Let me encourage you to say this. These brochures, this message in its fullness, not fullness, but this message is already here. I brought just in case you would want to have something for your own study, stop by the bookstore and get it. This message in its entirety is in those tapes, renewing of the mind. I urge you, I urge you, not because I need to sell a tapes, I urge you that you get that message. If that message will not transform your life, I'll refund any money that you spend. Because I know it will change your life. As a matter of fact, I used that message to do my doctoral thesis on that. And when I submitted that to my atheist colleagues, it blew them away. He says, where did you get this? I said, very simple. The one book that everybody avoids called the Bible. Did you know it was so shocking to them, such a revelation to them, that they never realized that a person has the ability to control his mind, that a person has the ability to reach out and be creative, that a person can do things with their mind. It's so important that you understand that process. And when you understand that, you'll understand how the devil operates. There are only two sources that attack that will come to you, God and the devil. And whichever controls you, that's the behavior you will have. In psychology, we are taught that psychology is a behavior of science, animals and humans. How dare you compare me to an animal? But that's what they classify psychology as. Psychology is nothing but a sukkah, which means soul. And soul is given by God, and that soul is capable to make a decision. Well, I don't want to get into that right now, but I'm telling you, it's important that you get that. Stand to your feet, please. For additional tapes or a complete tape catalog, write Love and Grace Fellowship, Post Office Box 7126, Fort Myers, Florida, 33911. Please return any defective tapes within 30 days for a free replacement. Thank you. And remember, God's richest blessings are yours. Believe it or not. Tulsa to Fort Myers. Fort Myers, Florida. We started a church there and starting a Bible school in September. You're in that area... Come, we'll, go, we'll give you a double dose. I have some brochures here if you want any. Father, dismiss us from this place, but not from your presence. My Lord, my God, I pray for every person here. If there's a need right now, you speak directly to their spirit and show them who they are in you, Jesus. They don't have to be second-rate citizens. They can be and should be, must be number one in Jesus. And Father, I thank you for your spirit, for your love. I thank you, Lord, for blessing us. And I thank you, Lord, for revealing the truth to us. And I'll praise you forever. Devil, I bind you and I command you loose every mind, every heart, and every soul here in Jesus' precious name. And Father, as your people go, my prayer is, may they live as long as they want. But Father, may they never want as long as they live in Jesus' name. Until tomorrow at 9. God bless you. Don't forget to go next door. This way, this way, this way, this way.